Howdy folks, I'm Score at the Crimson Renegade, and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII. We're ready to head out now, we're going to proceed to the Ropeway Station, and head out and continue on the plot. We need that we have the Keystone now, we're ready to head to the Temple of the Ancients. Uh, here's the station. Hang right through here. Head out here. Now well, things are a little different, let's head over here. What's this guy stopping us for? Out of order? Well, how do we get off the uh, gold saucer? We can't. We could always jump. I mean, hey, we already know Cloud can survive falls at almost infinite heights. He fell off the uh, uh, Sector 5 uh, walkway when it blew up. Or when uh, Airbuster blew up. Alright, looks like we're going to go to the uh, hotel for a while. We have a whole bunch of new people on our party, so let's do some exposition. Let's catch up on the story of what we've been doing. Right? Right. And there's all nine of us. This is the entire party. This is everybody you could possibly get in the game. I didn't get a chance to show off this area. This is the this is the ghost square. I wanted to come here eventually and, and show you guys each of the different squares in this area, but um, after you get kicked out of the gold saucer, I just wanted to proceed on with the plot. I was eventually going to show this, but where we are, we're in the ghost square. It's essentially it's a hotel. Obviously, it's a ghost called the ghost hotel, and it's just literally that. It's just an inn. And there's, there's a shop over here to the left. Nothing really interesting there. That's just you, Barrett. All right, I'll give it a shot. Exposition, here we go. And we start with that sentence. Straightforward enough, I suppose. Okay. Oh, Eric's got to put her two cents in. He's like, oh yeah, right, I forgot about that. <laughs> okay. Now, as far as I know, unless I've just missed something blatantly obvious, there is no way to have known this about this about this particular about the black material before this point. The closest reference we had to it was when we talked to the guy that gave us the uh, information about the keystone being in Dio's hands, and we got the great gospel from him. Um, he mentions ultimate destructive magic. That ultimate destructive magic is summoned by the black materia. So with a now, the term black materia is never said at, at this point. So if you're confused by about, if you're playing this game yourself and you're confused by this sudden real, this sudden uh, uh, announcement of the of the introduction of this black materia term, uh, don't be because you didn't miss anything. It, 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 this is where basically we're explaining the point of the black materia, the whole reason that Sephiroth is trying to find the promised land, apparently. So, don't be surprised or confused about this term black material. If you miss, I thought maybe you missed something in the dialogue, you didn't. This is the first time it's actually mentioned, aside from that little house that we talked about, where they mentioned ultimate destructive magic. They didn't specifically say black materia, but that is what they're referring to.
Right. Organization 13? No, not the same thing. I have no idea what she was going to say there. I couldn't have possibly guessed why she just randomly said and, and then ran off to bed. Yeah, what about the black material? We didn't really finish about that. Oh good, meaning he doesn't feel like explaining it right now. She likes a puppy. Meanwhile, Sid has been unconscious this entire time sleeping. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of A Date at the Gold Saucer. I'm your host, Score, the Crimson Renegade, and today we find out who our bachelor has chosen to go on a special date at the Gold Saucer. First, let's meet our bachelor. He's 21, a former member of Shinra's soldier program, and now works for a mercenary organization fighting against Shinra called Avalanche. He likes cross-dressing, motorcycle riding, and hitting things with his really, really big <gasps> sword. Straight from the once burnt down, but now somehow not burnt down town of Nibelheim, meet Cloud Strife. Now let's meet the potential dates. Date number one is a gentle lady whose hometown has yet to be revealed. She's an ancient, yet only 22 years old. Currently residing in Midgar, her hobbies are selling flowers, roaming the Sector 5 slums because she's used to danger, and forming fast relationships with men who fall through the roof of a church. Meet Eris Gainsborough. Date number two is a martial artist from the same town as our bachelor, Nibelheim. In fact, the two knew each other when they were young children. She likes to... Oh, let's face it, she's got really, really big tits. All she would need to do is flash him once, and Clyde would be plowing her right where she stood. Come on, you know there's no bra under that tight shirt. Anyway, meet Tifa Lockhart. Date number three is a ninja from the distant island town of Wutai. She hates boats and airships due her to severe tendency for motion sickness. She's also quite young, only... Wait, is this right? Can we legally have her on the show? Oh, well, that's not my problem. <clears throat> She's also quite young, only 16 years old. If she is chosen by our bachelor, Chris Hansen is on standby backstage waiting to tell Cloud to have a seat. Meet Yuffie Kisar... 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 <clears throat> Meet Yuffie the Jailmate. Finally, date number four is also a member of the anti shimmer organization Avalanche. He is apparently exactly what the Japanese think black people are like. Huge, muscular, bossy, carry guns, and talk like Mr. T. His favorite pastime is sitting on the gold saucer gondola in an awkward silence, then breaking said silence to bring up his white, adopted four-year-old daughter, Marlene. He's an absolute 100% racial stereotype. Meet Barrett Wallace. Now you've met The Bachelor. You've met his potential dates. Now it's time for him to decide who he will take out for... A date at the Gold Saucer. His actions and responses have been made. The moment has come. The date who gets some one-on-one -on -one time with our bachelor and this episode's winner of A Date at the Gold Saucer is... 
Take number two, Tifa. Congratulations. You two win tickets to the live show at the event square and a free ride on the convoy at the round square. That wraps up this episode of Date at the Gold Saucer. Join us next time when our dreamy bachelor from Xanarkin, get it, chooses between a timid but bold summoner on pilgrimage to save the world, a bitchy black mage with big tits, or a 16-year-old Albed girl. Seriously, what is with square and jailbait? That's next time on A Date at the Gold Saucer. At this point, it's all, this is where you, the game decides is it, this kid, like, who is the date is going to be is going to be very is going to depend on what you do throughout the game, the responses you give to not only NPCs but also the characters themselves. Uh, I have given you a few, a few hints throughout the game and tips as to what I'm pretty sure um, affects the uh, romance options or the date options one way or another. Um, I don't know all of them that well. Some of them are pretty obvious. Like if you're talking to, say, Tifa, and you've got kind of a positive answer and kind of a negative answer, you know, if you go toward the positive answer, obviously that would gain points with her, negative response would have lost points with her, so on and so forth. There's some conversations with NPCs that if uh, you answer them one way and that person's in the party, it may gain romance points with them or lose romance points with them. Um, a lot of that happens really early on throughout Midgar and uh, Calm. Not so much after you leave Calm. Um, there is some things that do affect that, but most of it is during the opening part of the game in Midgar and once you reach Calm. Um... But um, the uh, it's decided between it's decided between four people: Tifa, Eris, Yuffie, and believe it or not, Barrett. In just case I haven't mentioned this before. <clears throat> uh, also, there is if there, if for any reason there is a tie among those four, uh, let's say for any reason all four of them ended up with the same number of points. I internally, there is a a counter that decide, that po that adds up points and subtracts points as you progress throughout the game and resp uh, make responses certain ways one or another. Um, in this is internal clock, an internal number. There's no way you can count it, no way you can look for it or whatever, unless you just write them, write the numbers down and you, because you know the responses. Um, if for any reason all four of them are tied in in their in their number, it would go in the order of priority, which would be Eris, then Tifa, then Yuffie, then Barrett. So, if all four of them were tied, you would get Eris no matter what. Um, <clears throat> if the highest spot is tied, it's going to go among that, that priority order as well. So, let's say it was, uh, if, if, Yuffie and, if Yuffie and Barrett were tied for the most, Yuffie would be the one you'd go on the date with. If Tifa and Barrett were tied for the most, it'd be Tifa you'd go on the date with. So, you see what I'm saying? In priority order, it'd be Eris, Tifa, Yuffie, Barrett. So if any of those are tied for the highest, the, the, that order is what it would go in to, for priority order. So if Barrett was tied with anybody for the highest, he would never be, the, he would never be in the date. It would always be one of the females that would get the uh, date. So at this point, whoever has the highest number would, get, would be the one you go on the date with regarding priority order, of course, with, barring a tie. So obviously I got teeth of this one, so let's... Uh, Okay, let's see how this goes. She's just pushing us out the door. <laughs> Oh, other things that affect the uh, the romance system, the dating system, is uh, when you put party members when you have party when you have party members join and leave. Um, for example, when you leave Midgar for the first time and you choose your party members there, you gain points with Barrett, Tifa, and Eris if they are if any of them are in your party. If you leave any of them out, I think you lose some points with uh, those that you've left out. So let's say, for example, you pick Red and Barrett. You'll gain points with Barrett, and you may lose points with Eris and Tifa, so on and so forth, things like that. So, point, um, when you're at uh, when you're at the Midgar um, in the Shinra Tower, <coughs> when you're rescuing Eris from uh, when you're rescuing uh, re essentially re rescuing Eris and Red from Hojo in the uh, at, at floor 67, I think it was 68. I forget. Um, 
whoever you choose to protect Eris, they, I think, gain points. If you have them protect Eris while you, uh, while you fight the boss. Um, who you choose to go with you when you go try to find the 66th floor elevator, if you put any of those four in, or those three in your party, um, they gain and or lose points. Um, when you leave call, I think you uh, actually don't get an option to change your party there. But, uh, all, but er, let's sort of say early on, responses that you make and actions that you, responses that you give to NPCs, depending on who's in party, and also who you pick for your parties when you form parties in Midgar up, up to about Calm, uh, helps to s choose who is uh, who gains points, who loses points, and so forth like that. All right, so let's move on. Uh, going to the uh, going to the event square where there's that this is a little stage here where they do a little show. Hundredth couple, huh? I don't see a hundred couples in st out there in the uh, audience though. Oh boy. God, what? Okay. Let's see how good Cloud is at improv, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, th there's multiple ways. What the hell's wrong with the police officer? He's walking with the, or the guard or whatever. I'm gonna have some fun with this. You can do this multiple different ways, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to have a little fun with this one. Peaceful Kingdom of Galdia. Okay, I got a. I, I, I'm curious about this. Like, this is this is kind of you know kind of coming out of the game for a second, but the peaceful kingdom of Galdia. Now, in Final Fantasy VIII, early on the uh, well, I was early on throughout most of the game, the opposing garden that you deal with for those who played Final Fantasy VIII is called Galbadia, which is just a couple of letters off from from, the, from what the spelling of Galdia here is. I wonder if that was done on purpose or if that was just that happenstance. Hmm. Anyway, let's move on. Princess Rosa was kidnapped by the evil dragon king Valvados. What will become of her? Then just then legendary hero Alfred appears. Hi, Alfred. <laughs> uh uh, that's not me. <laughs> Who me? That's my line? Yeah, you. <laughs> <clears throat> Please talk to the king. Okay, let's talk to the king. Uh huh. Right. Talk to the one who can help me, huh? A wizard just came on stage, so do I talk to the wizard or the knight? Hmm. Let's talk to the knight. Uh, that's, that's how to defeat the king. Oh, they just skip something happens there. Okay, let me just move on. Oh, they just leave here. Look, it's Princess Rosa, dressed like Tifa. with that night. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh! She just bitch slapped Cloud and he falls over dead. <laughs> and then the <laughs> Tina kicks, the, kicks the, the dragon off screen. <laughs> The new legendary hero is Rosa. I was trying to leave her after. <laughs> I like screwing with that, with that little uh, scene a little bit. You could do it the right way if you wanted to, and you'd end up kissing Tifa on the hand, but uh, I wanted to screw it up. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to go to the round square. We're going to do a little gondola ride. Now you're in control of Cloud here, you can look around, look up, down, right, 
anytime you see, every time uh, Tifa talks, you can look toward the window, and you can uh, get a, you get a little cutscene here, or you can just absolutely do nothing, and every time she says anything, nothing would happen. But anytime she uh, mentions, says something, you can actually look out the window, and uh, you get a little little FMV here. So I'm gonna do that just to show off what those look like. You can press A to look forward, like I'm trying to look at her, and she'll look around. This one we can't avoid. I, apparently, I think we missed one, maybe because I had her looking around. But uh, usually, there's two. There's two you could look at before you do this one. This one is going to happen regardless, because I, could, I couldn't turn Cloud toward the window. He would do it. He, he did it automatically. So this one is going to happen regardless. But I think there was two the F and V that's supposed to happen before you get this view here, because there's going to be some conversation happens afterwards. I'm not going to control the dialogue here either. That wasn't what she was going to say. Are you really that dense, Cloud? Ugh. Sometimes I think Cloud is too dense for his own good. Why are we looking at Kate Sith? What is he doing? I guess he's not. I guess he doesn't really have to sleep. He's well, he's a cat on a Moogle. I guess he would sleep sometimes. Why? He's right. He is acting strange. Why is he holding the keystone? And why is he running away? All right, let's follow him into the battle square. All right, he ran into. The, in case you in case you can't really tell, he ran into the speed square. And now into the wonder square. So just keep pursuing. Keep pursuing, Kate. Oh, well, damn. I wonder where he could be. It's really hard to spot a cat on a giant moogle hiding behind a chocobo that's not anywhere near his size. By the way, he's the white thing behind the chocobo. Boo. <laughs> and he jumped into the chocobo, the cho chocobo square. So go to the chocobo square. He'll be running inside the building, so run up into the chocobo, in the, in, into the chocobo arena. You won't be able to catch him, so don't worry. You're not going to be able to do anything wrong here. He's going to go around one side of the thing. You can try to chase him around this way, but he'll end up going back the other direction anyway. Out the door. And then, uh, then the chase is over. And he threw the keystone at Song. Well, damn. The spy is revealed. Right. So it's not even a real cat, it's a toy cat, it's a puppet. So the real person is at Shinra headquarters in Midgar, huh? Wow. I'd like to know what kind of radio-controlled uh, device he's using to be able to control this cat from that far away. Half a world, actually. That's some good radio contact.
Oh, I'd like to see how to explain your way out of that line. Well, clearly you get paid every time we kill an enemy. Somehow money drops off of them. Which, now I think about it, it's kind of weird. How does guilt drop off of uh, random monsters we kill in the field? Huh. Prepared something. Uh-oh, he has Marlene. I'm glad you know where it is. Hmm. Alright, well, that date ended uh, abruptly and sadly. Oh, well, we're by ourselves in the... Uh, in the hotel room. Before we leave, let's go over here, open this up. We get an elixir. Alright. You can open up as many times as you want, you only get one elixir out of it. Alright, now let's leave. We can't we meet up with everybody else. I was gathering an elixir and thinking of ways I could beat the beat the head off of you, cat. Take the tiny barco east towards the sea. Very vague. Yeah, very, very vague. Alright, Eris wants to go. So, we're going to the Temple of the Ancients, so obviously she has to go. Now, who's going to be tagging along with us? Um, I think I'm going to keep my party as is for now. I'm still working up Tifa's Limit Breaks. So, I think I'm going to keep her for now. Um... So yeah, we're gonna just, I'm going to keep with the party we've got. Eris, Tifa, and Cloud. Um, I will be bringing other members in. Don't worry, I'm not stuck. I'm not sticking with the girls just because I'm a, I'm liking them or whatever. Just, I've already explained the reasons why I'm keeping them in. I'll keep this way for a little while longer. This will be my party. Now, if you want to, you can actually talk to any of these guys out here to change your party just like any other time. And um, we're ready to move on. So now, once you, uh, once you leave the Ghost Hotel... Um, you won't be able to come back in here and talk to these guys to make you change. If you want to change party members, you have to find a save point and use a PHS. So this is your last opportunity to make your changes right here, right now. But since I've already got my, uh, my team set up, I am ready to go. So let's go ahead and head on out. Here's the ghost hotel. Uh, here's, the, uh, here's how you get to the other, hotel, the other, uh, circ uh, the other squares in this area. Uh, yeah, here's the station. This is, I mean, some of these are kind of hard to read. This is Chocobo. This says Battle. This says Round, Wonder, Event, and Speed. So, station is obviously where we want to go. The station is where you go back to the beginning of the area, you know, how you leave the, uh, uh, the how you leave the, the Gold Saucer. Um, now that you've gone through the event with uh, Kate Seth, uh, the tram is back online. It, it's working again. So we want to go to the stages to look at the uh, gravestone, interact with it, and you'll fall in and end up right there, right at the station where we want to be. All right, we are going to leave the uh, gold saucer, and while we are, while we are, our objective is to head to the Temple of Anci the Ancients. We're not going there just yet. We're going to take a little side trip and take a side quest to a side location that we almost went to a moment ago. We'll take this back uh, down to uh, the north, uh, back down to North Corral, and I'll uh, I'll meet you guys at the uh, Tiny Bronco, and we'll be taking the Tiny Bronco to our next destination, which is like I said, not the Temple of the Ancients, but a side quest, and I'll share that to you in the next episode of Final Fantasy VII. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 
Uh, don't forget to uh, check out the uh, links at the end of the video for more of my videos. And thanks so much for watching. I'm Score, the Prince of Renegade, and I'll see you later.